Hi folks, Rusty with Sagacity All Stream Fabrication Engineering here with another episode in our basic tech series. You know, if you're going to connect a piece of instrumentation to your process piping, more than likely you're going to use tubing rather than piping. And if you're going to connect your tubing to the process, you're going to need to use a tube fitting. Today's episode, we're going to talk about tube fittings, a little history lesson, and how they're correctly applied. Tube fittings are an answer to an industry that went out in the 1940s and 50s. After World War II, industry was growing and expanding, and the only type of connection that had been used previously was a flare type fitting. Well, if you've ever had to flare tubing in the field, you know it's time consuming and it can be tricky given your environment. So the call went out to the industry and the answer came in the late 1950s and the first patented tube fitting came out onto the market. Tube fittings are constructed of a body, a rear ferrule, front ferrule, and a nut. The idea was that the tubing would be pushed into the fitting itself and rest on the shoulder inside and machined inside of the body bottoming out on that shoulder, then you could tighten the nut, engaging the ferrules so that it would seal on the tubing and hold the tubing in place. We're going to demonstrate that here in a few minutes. The two ferrule design uh, was the first design and was very common. In fact, it was patented in industry for a long time. However, by the late 70s, other people had ideas on how to approach the same problem. So, they came out with the single ferrule design. Single ferrule designs are used in industry quite a lot. In fact, in high vibration applications, they're supposed to be a little bit more resilient. You still have the body, but you have a single ferrule that does the action of both the front and back ferrules and a nut. You'll notice the nut before in this nut, this one's molybdenum coated. The other nut had a silver coating on it, which is used as a lubrication so that when you make up the fitting, which is putting it together correctly or making up the fitting, there's some lubrosity of the nut on the body itself and it also prevents galling. As a piping component, tube fittings are very versatile. In fact, they can be made with just about any type of piping connection in front or tubing connection in back. This particular model has 3 16 tubing connection in the back, but a 5 8 inch thread in front. We're going to talk a little bit about how to make up a fitting here in a minute using a male connector which has a quarter inch connection in front and a quarter inch connection in back. So how does a tube fitting work? When you tighten down on the nut, the rear ferrule tends to bite into the tubing. It also engages the front ferrule, pushing it down into the chamfer located on the body. That burnishes that surface and also engages the tubing actually around the entire circumference of the tube, causing it to seal, if you will, on the process side. The job of the rear ferrule is to make sure it bites into the tubing all the way around the circumference and its job is to form a shoulder which stabilizes the tubing connection. That's the original tubing fitting design Single ferrules work much the same way and are made up much the same way. As you might imagine, since the 1950s, there's been several different takes on how to build a tube fitting. There's over 80 different manufacturers globally now building a type of tube fitting. With that kind of competition, people are going to be pretty aggressively trying to get you to use their type of tube fitting and the question always seems to come up, will the parts from brand X fit in brand Y. Can I use the ferrules from this brand to manufacture in this type of fitting over here? And in some instances the answer is yes, but we recommend you talk to somebody that understands the entire fitting market so that you don't start mixing and matching parts from different manufacturers. If you have a single ferrule design and you install a double ferrule set, how will you know? That could end up causing leaks later on down the line and the last thing you want to do is have a leak in a brand new tubing run. If you do happen to have to mix and match, make sure you leak detect everything before you apply pressure. 
So how do you make up or put together a tubing connection? First thing you want to do is use a tubing cutter. Tubing cutters with a good sharp wheel will tend to cut the tubing straight and leave very little burr, which is going to make it easy for you to clean up your tubing before you do an installation. Why deburr the tubing? Well, depending upon how you cut your tubing, some people in larger tubing sizes will actually use a hacksaw, which we don't recommend, but if, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that you're going to cut straight. But you have to deburr the tubing. In this particular instance, we've done a cut here, and it's left a small burr on the front leading edge of that tubing where the wheel went through the tubing. If we don't take that off prior to making up our fitting, that's going to set that tubing off of that shoulder just enough to where it might not completely engage the ferrule set. We want to make sure we deburr the tubing, and the proper way to do that is to use a deburring tool. These barrel shaped devices will let you take and deburr the outside of the tubing, turn it around, and deburr the inside of the tubing to take that burr off so that when you insert the tubing into the fitting, it rests completely on the shoulder of the fitting inside the body, and you make sure your ferrules are completely engaged. So how do we make up a fitting? We've already deburred this side. We're going to insert the tube into our fitting all the way down to the shoulder. Now, if you're under a quarter inch, smaller than this, you'll use a three quarter turn. Most people will mark on a wrench flat where they're starting out after their finger tight, and they'll take a wrench and tighten it around three quarters of a turn for anything smaller than a quarter inch, say three sixteenths, eighths, one sixteenth. If you're quarter inch to one inch in size, you want to rotate the nut one and a quarter turns. No more. One and a quarter turns will seat the ferrules exactly where they need to be. If you're larger than one inch, say one and a half, one and a quarter inch, one and a half turns of the nut will fully engage the ferrules. There's a device called a go no go gauge that fits between the body and the nut, slides in, and if it slides in snugly, you've probably got a good fitting makeup. If it's too loose, you may not have gone the full one and a quarter turns. Too tight, and it won't fit at all. You've probably overmade your fitting. There's a practice in industry, a lot of people not knowing any better, they'll tighten the nut up until they just can't go any further. That will overmake the fitting, could crush or warp the ferrules, and end up with a leak. Make sure you make up, especially if you're installing a fitting for the first time, make sure you make up that fitting correctly. One and a quarter turns is the rule of thumb for everything from one quarter to one inch, which is the typical sizes you'll use to install your instrumentation. So what happens when you have to take this fitting connection apart? How do you do that? Well, the first thing you do is take a belt tip marker or some type of a marker, paint pen, and mark a wrench flat in relation to the flat on the nut itself. Now what you're going to want to do that for is when you take this apart, the front and rear ferrule set will stay connected to the tubing. You'll take this fitting apart and when you remake the fitting, when you test your instrument and do whatever you need to do, you'll put that tubing connection back into the body and you'll go back to your original starting point where your two marks line up and you'll go approximately one eighth of a turn more. That'll remake the fitting tighten it back up for a leak tight seal. More than an eighth of a turn and you'll probably run into quite a bit of resistance, so be sure not to over make your fitting. And be very cautious when applying pressure to a remade fitting, especially if it's been done two or three times. As a rule of thumb, after about four remakes, I tend to find a new nut and ferrule set and go back in and remake that tubing connection. Well, that's about it for tube fittings. This should give you a basic understanding of how to apply these devices when interfacing tubing with piping in your application. If you've used these devices, be sure and leave a comment below and let us know where you have them installed. If you need to use these devices and you have questions, be sure and reach out to us, comment below, give us a call. We'll be happy to help you with your application. If this has been helpful. Be sure and like and share this video with your friends. Thanks so much for watching.